Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to be looking at another Vampire Count mod, mainly because there are so many and they do affect different bloodlines. Today's mod is Kalika's Strigos, Rebuild the Strigos Empire. In fact, this modder has a few interesting mods regarding other bloodlines, so we might cover them in the future. The mod itself has a bit of backstory. Ghoul King Vorag Bloodytooth has led his army to build a strong fortress in the Plain of Bones. Hearing of Vorag's achievements, King Yushiran saw the hope of rebuilding his empire. He returned again and finally recovered Morgheim. Let the two armies work together to defeat the enemies who have persecuted them in the past and bring the revival to the Strigos. Now, what sets apart the Strigoi bloodline from the other vampires? Well, simply put, the Strigoi aren't as backstabby as all the others. Despite their appearance and, well, sometimes insanity, the vampires of the Strigoi bloodline seem to be more level-headed than all the others. In truth, even Yushiran, the brother of Neferata, and who is considered to be the first Strigoi vampire, wished to form a kingdom for all vampiric kind. This was after the fall of Lemire, where many of the vampires had found themselves being hunted like dogs and spread out through across the Warhammer world. Sadly, this was never to be, as Neferata is, well, a jealous woman. But still, many Strigoi have risen to fairly high ranks, when not hiding in the darkest caverns of the Warhammer world, of course. But let's not waste any more time and jump into this mod. As always, I'll be starting a fresh new campaign in easy mode and easy battles, simply so I can show off anything of interest at a much quicker pace. The campaign begins in the Marshes of Madness, where full control of the province has already been gained. Straight off the bat, we will notice that there are a few unique landmarks, all of which provide some benefits for the faction in one way or another. It's only a shame that you have three unique landmarks, and the capital city itself only has eight slots. If you build all three, it takes you down to just four slots if you include the main settlement building. Just a personal thing here, I wish that the modder would have updated the main settlement to be a 10 slotter, especially since this is a two settlement province. The mod itself also has a few other unique buildings which provide either new units or new benefits. In all honesty, you only really need these buildings, especially if you want to have a roleplay type of campaign. If you only want to focus around the Strigos themselves, you don't really need to build any of the vanilla buildings. But bear in mind that a law-friendly Strigos army is rather limited. You'll still be able to do a decent amount of damage, especially early game, but you might find your units lacking a little bit once you start getting into later game campaigns. First, we're going to check out the new hero, the Strigoi Courtier. This is a fully melee hero, no spells whatsoever, which fits with the lore of the Strigoi themselves. Use this hero as you would a White King, but that's pretty much all I can say about it. And now we'll look towards the first of two legendary lords, Yushiran, the first of the Strigoi. This is your main legendary lord throughout this campaign, and to be honest, the stats themselves represent quite well. He's not great, but he's decent enough, acting as a triple threat in terms of campaign ability. A decent melee lord who should be able to hold his own when fighting against others. A fair amount of spells in all honesty, nothing too great, but then again, Spirit Leech is always king here and a decent amount of unlockable skills which we're going over right now. They vary between self-buffing or buffs towards your natural army, which is fantastic as it is. Most of them buff up Yushiran himself to make him more of a powerhouse, but you have some which reduce upkeep of, say for example, Crypt Ghouls and Crypt Horrors. In all honesty, the legendary items themselves seem a bit too overpowered. But then again, since the majority of your army is pretty much no armor whatsoever and not really that competent in melee combat, I guess this kind of levels it out? The 25% reduction of upkeep for Crypt Ghouls is honestly amazing, and the fact that you can get it as early as level 6 will make sure that you'll have extra armies out there causing havoc as fast as possible. As stated before, we also have control of the Plane of Bones. Two armies, two kingdoms. On easier difficulties, this might not be a problem. However, on harder ones, say for example very hard or legendary, it might be a bit too difficult to control two separate areas. Sure, they might be relatively close to each other, however, there are a few possible enemies within the way. 
Either way, something like this does present an interesting challenge, especially for Vampire Count players, who let's be honest, after a certain point, the game becomes more of a steamroll more than anything else. The technology tree doesn't really change, barring some extra technology which serves to buff up your human servants. Nothing too great, but at least it's something. There are indeed many mods released through the workshop which never really give you any possible benefits to any custom units. You also get the ability to upgrade some of your baseline units, such as your Crypt Ghouls, in the same way that the Orcs currently do, as from the Nuts and Bolts update. The upgrades themselves are fairly decent, I'll let you explore them as you wish, but to be honest, they are fairly competitive. There isn't too much in terms of mechanics or new units and so on, instead this minor type of mod is there for you to have a unique roleplay experience more than anything else during your campaigns. Unfortunately, unless I'm completely blind, it seems that I can't use these units in custom battles, so instead I've decided to have a proper battle against one of the orc nations near me and go over more or less what would be a law friendly army for the kingdom of the Strigos. So as you'll notice in this army, there is a decent mix between Crypt Ghouls and Peasants. This is because the Strigoi Vampires who've ended up in positions of power will normally work with mutants or outcasts. In general sense, those who have been able to found a kingdom also make heavy use of the people who inhabit it. We know of some Strigoi, for example one that rules within the Border Princes, who is seen as a just ruler, and does not feast on his citizens. Instead, those who are in true danger are those criminals, or those who threaten his territories. So this mix in terms of army composition can be considered quite law friendly. You wouldn't be using a lot of skeletons, zombies, graveguard and other types of undead units, simply because the Strigoi themselves are more primal. They are some of the most physically powerful vampires to walk upon the Warhammer world. However, the obvious drawback here was that they weren't very competent at controlling the winds of magic. Physical strength is the most important in this army, so loads of ghouls, monsters and some peasants and you're basically just fine. This was a rather enjoyable mod, in all honesty I'm a big fan of these smaller types of mods, the ones that add in just a few things here and there in an effort to just give it some flavour and add in the possibility for the player to have a role playable experience. As always, the mod can be found in the description below, and if you're interested in a Strigoi, less magic heavy and more mutant style of gameplay for the vampire counts, I suggest you pick this one up and give it a try. But with that my friends, we come to the end of our video, thank you so much for watching, if you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various different social media links such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord where you can get in contact with a great book team. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products not just Warhammer for 10-25% to off. Using our special link and also our special code, both of which can be found in our description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A special thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Pence and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Huell and VS Vasan for subscribing to us at our fame level. Honestly, I can't thank you guys enough for the support, it really means a lot to me, especially since all the money earned from Patreon goes directly back onto the channel. New webcam, equipment, microphones and so on. And a big thank you to all of you liking, sharing, commenting on these videos. Honestly, I'm really enjoying creating this content and chatting to all of you guys about speculation, new content and so on. It's absolutely awesome. It's been nice to make a few friends along the way. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again and I shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.